I'm Pastor Mike, and um, it's good to be in this church. Do you feel what I feel? Man, it's good to be in the house of the Lord. Um, um, Pastor Jason was sitting in his office one day, and he said, um, um, we need to get someone to speak on October the 15th. So who am we going to get? He said, you know what? We're going to call the best preacher in all of America. <laughs> so he called him up, and he turned him down. <laughs> he looked at Veronica, Pastor Veronica, you got anybody? He said, hey, let's get the best looking pastor in America. <laughs> he called him up and turned him down. So they thought, they thought, we'll just get a funny preacher. Called him up, turned him down. I'm in my office one day working, screwing a light bulb in, and my assistant, I'm on a ladder, and she says, hey, there's this um, Pastor Jason Hanash. He uh, wants to know if you will speak for him on October the 15th. I said, well, I guess so. I've turned him down three times. <laughs> it could be the Lord. It could be the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> I've been friends with these guys for a long, long time. I love them so much. You love your pastors. Let's give them a good God bless you hand clap. Thank you, guys. Thank you for all the sacrifice, all the things that you do. Nobody knows what goes on behind the scenes is what pastors do, but there's, we thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of our hearts. And thank you for this great church, and um, uh, we love you for it. So, um, did any of you grow up broke? I mean broke. I grew up broke. Uh, we, were, we weren't poor. We were po. <laughs> we couldn't even afford the whole word broke. I mean, I mean uh, we lived in a house and the tooth fairy left the IOUs my entire life. I mean, uh, it was just, we were and we weren't that smart either. Um, teacher at school asked me one day, he said, hey, Mike, use a pronoun in a sentence. I said, sure, teach. Emmett Smith, he used to be a rookie, but he's a pro now. <laughs> but we were dumb and broke. I mean, we were so broke, we'd go down to KFC and lick everybody else's fingers. Broke. <laughs> That's broke. I got to looking around. My daddy had eight kids, and I got to thinking, I'm not going to be broke when I get old. And you having eight kids, that's a lot of money. Uh, and I just, it just, it just got, a, got, a, got into my thinking. I'm not going to be broke. I went to college, and I said, I'm not going to be broke. I'm not going to be broke. I'm going to make some money. Went in, and got into business school, and I'm, I'm going to go to make some money. And uh, <clears throat> then I got saved. And I got saved. Um, that's cool. I can be saved and be rich. And so one day, a guy came along, and he says, God wants you to preach I said, get thee behind me, Satan. <laughs> the only preachers I know are broke, and I'm not going to be broke. I mean, it was, I was possessed with it, and, but I started reading the Bible. Really, what turned my life around was reading the Bible, and I would read scriptures like in Deuteronomy. God enjoys blessing his children so that he can show them off to other people. And I, I started, my psychic, because I came from a broke mentality, a broken down mentality, poor mentality, and, and ignorant mentality, and I started reading the Bible, and I started reading verses that just transforming my life. Genesis 8, 22, it says, as long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, and summer and winter, day and night shall never cease. And so I was uh, in a service one day, and a missionary came along, and, and, and this had never happened to me before. Um, I felt like God spoke to me. This missionary was needing $50 a month pledge for a whole year to go back to his place in his country. The Lord spoke to me and says, give that missionary $50 a week for a whole year. I said, Lord, <laughs> I'm broke. <laughs> 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 
And Lord, I don't know if you know who you're talking to, but I uh, took all the money I had to pay my college to get into this college, and now you da 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 And he said another thing to me. He said, we can do this your way or my way. And I'd been reading the Bible, and I knew this kind of thing happened, but I just didn't know what happened today. So I said, okay, I'll give $50 a month. And then I thought, where's am I going to get $50 a month? First month, I got 50 bucks. Second month, I got 50 bucks. And I, after one year, I was able to pay that entire $600 pledge off. And right after that last payment, someone walked into the business office and paid off my school for the entire next year. And the Lord said, we can do this your way or we can do it my way. So I started learning some things. And as I've been a pastor forever. And people talk to me all the time about their finances and, and stuff like that. And I had a couple come to me. And he said, we need to have lunch with you. I went to lunch with them, and the guy said, we don't know what's wrong. We keep paying our tithes, but we just barely make it, and, and we just can't make it at all sometimes, and we don't know what's wrong. We've been doing this for years. I said, well, let's I talk to him a little bit and, and talk to him a little bit more, and then she started talking really bad about preachers and and. And big churches, she went after Joel Osteen. She went after my, 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 my Bishop Jakes. I mean, don't touch my bishop. I mean, come on. <laughs> and she went after another preacher. And about that time, uh, I was sitting down with him, and he was there, and she was here, and, and I was sitting next to her for some odd reason. And, and the more she talked, the more I got away from her. And I kept scooting away, scooting away, scooting away. And in about 15 minutes, I, one part of my rear was on the chair and one was ready to go. I mean, I was out of there. And I realized right then and there, you cannot be blessed when your speech does not match your faith. You have talked yourself into a curse. Because life and death is in the power of the tongue. And for the last 15 minutes, all I've heard was death. Why do you feel it necessary for you to be the spiritual police officer for the daily ministries that are going on out there? I don't know what you do or where you got all of this, but if I were you, I would get my mouth born again. Sometimes as pastors, you have to say things, you know, you don't like to say. Say, but, but write this down if you're taking notes, because you cannot have what you speak against. You're wanting the blessings of the Lord, and you're cursing his very guys and gals that bring it. I mean, if you want divine healing, you can't walk around saying, well, I don't know if God heals everybody today, you know, I don't know, uh, you know, I don't know. And if you want to speak against salvation, your second home is going to be hell. I mean, come on. If you want to speak against things, just you're going to, if you want to speak against uh, all men are dogs, <laughs> we're going to look up one day and you're going to be married to a dog. <laughs> you spoke it out. We didn't. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Ladies, if I were you and if you were single, I would say, all oh, men are wonderful. We'll work on that next time when I get back. <laughs> First King chapter 17, I want to read you a text. Can you read a long text? It's okay to read a long text in the Bible. First Kings chapter 17. I, I'll skip down. You have it in your outline there, but in verse 1. But I want to skip down to verse 7. From the New International Version of the Bible, 1 Kings 17, verse 7. Sometime later, the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. Then the word of the Lord came and said to Elijah, Go at once to Zarephath in Zidon and stay there. I've commanded a widow in that place to supply you with food. So he went to Zarephath. When he came to the town gate, a, wo a widow was gathering sticks. He called to her and asked, Would you bring me a glass of water in a jar so I can have a drink? And as she was going to get it, he called out, and bring me a piece of cornbread while you're at it, just like a preacher. <laughs> and surely, verse 12, she said, as surely as the Lord your God lives, she replied, I don't have any bread, only a handful of flour in a jar and a little jug of oil in a jug. 
I'm gathering a few sticks to take them home, make a meal for myself, my son, that we may eat it, and we're just going to die. So Elijah said to her, don't be afraid. Somebody say, don't be afraid. Go home and do as you have said, but first make a small cake of bread for me, and from what you have, bring it to me, and then make something for yourself and your son, for I'm giving you a word from the Lord right now. The God of Israel says, the jar of flour will not be used up, and the jug of oil will not run dry until the day the Lord gives rain on the land. So she went away and did as the man of God told her to do. So there was food every day for Elijah and the woman and her family, for the jar of flour was not used up, and the jug of oil did not run out, in keeping with the word of the Lord spoken by Elijah. Can somebody say, thank God for his word? So let me give you a little bit of backdrop here. Here's what's happening. Uh, king Ahab's in charge. He's about the sorriest king Israel ever had. And Elijah prophesied to him, because he and his wife Jezebel, they were just, they were nut jobs. And so oh, Elijah stood up one day and spoke to the king and said, let me tell you something, big boy. It ain't going to rain until I say so. He's talking to the king of the country. Now, how could the man of God speak like that? Because Elijah, Elijah had a way to hear the voice of God. I wrote a book called The God Nudge. It's out there if you want one. And it's learning to tune your ear to the voice of the Lord. How could the man of God say something like that? He said it because he knew God had his back. And said, when God's got your back, I mean, you could storm the gates of hell with a water pistol. This is Elijah right here speaking. It ain't going to rain. And it's been three years, and it has not rained. God sent him down to a brook, and he has let this brook water him. He brought birds to bring him food. You read the Bible. But one day, the brook dried up, and God told Elijah, I'm changing directions. You may be in this service. You may be watching online, and something is off in your life, and, 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 and it's, you're not as blessed as you used to be, and you feel like something. Just remember that when the blessings slow down in your life, it could be an indication that God is changing directions in your life. And this is what's happened in Elijah's life right here. And God is changing directions with him. And he said, okay, where do you want me to go? He said, I've got this widow that has been trying to hear from God. I want you to go to this widow in Zarephath, and I want you to let her take care of your needs. Elijah goes over there. He shows up, and, and all of a sudden, he finds this woman is just broke as broke could be. Hanging out with the Robertson's clan. <laughs> That's who we were when I was growing up. We were poor. I mean, he, he found the poorest woman in the country, but God has a heart for everybody, and he wanted to help this woman. So if, you, if, if, you're, if you're writing down notes, write this one down. And God put the prophet in need so he could talk to a broke woman about her seed. God will put the prophet in need to talk to the broker. God put this church in need. We're taking up pledges. We, we're doing this, this campaign. And why are we doing this? Because God wants to talk to all of us about our seed. I've been in this service. This is my second service today. God's talking to me. What kind of seed are you and Karen going to plant in this new church in Discovery in Bakersfield? I mean, God puts the church in need to talk to us about a seed. He said, go get me a glass of water. I've been trying to get my wife to do that forever. <laughs> she said, is your, my wife would say something, is your leg broke? We believe in divine healing in this house if you do. <laughs> you got to meet my wife one day. She's she pretty rough woman, uh, but uh, uh, she's from Arkansas. You know, you can always tell a woman's from Arkansas. <laughs> they got a can of Vienna sausages in their purse. <laughs> Some of y'all get that later on. But <clears throat> as she was going to get it, he yelled back at her and says, and bring me a piece of bread. And now she's about had it with this preacher. <laughs> okay, preacher, I can get you that water. But all I got left is enough bread to feed me and my boy, and we're about to die. So he senses this woman is really afraid, and she's afraid she's about to die. And now he understands his assignment, and he looks at her and says, hey, 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 don't be afraid. No, 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 don't be afraid. Uh, don't be afraid. Write this one down because this is really good. Fear tolerated is faith contaminated. 
if you're in a fearful situation right now, you got to get, somehow you got to build your faith. I love this worship that goes on in this church. Why do I love it? Because it builds my faith. It lets me know that everything's going to be all right. It lets me know I can make it another week. What am I doing? I'm building my faith. I go and hear the Word of God. I, I turn on Christian radio. And what am I doing? I'm building my faith. My faith, when then when fear steps in, you can just knock fear right between the eyes because then this is what Elijah did done with this woman here. He said, woman, we got to deal with the fear first. Get fear out of here. God is not a God of fear. God is a God of love, and we're just going to have faith. So let me give you three things. The title of the message today is How to Be Blessed in a Mess, and here's three things. If you want to be blessed in a mess, number one, be willing to do it God's way. Be willing to do it God's way. This is God's word right here. And I read this thing from cover to cover. I'm like that boy down in the south. He said, I believe it from cover to cover, even the maps in the back. <laughs> I don't know, but uh, I believe it from cover to cover. And because, but it's just rhema. Rhema, I mean, it's just logos. Logos is the written word of God. But when you're reading along there and a word shoots off to you, it's called the rhema of God. It's the word of God activated. It's the logos activated. A rhema shoots off. And you'll just, I mean, God will change your life if you can get in this word. It will revolution you in like none other. But you have to, once you read it, you say, okay, i got to be willing to do it God's way. How do I know what God's way? I know his word. I know what his way is. Let me share this one verse to you. Isaiah 55. Look at this verse. It's in the King James Version. As the, word, the word of the Lord. So shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It will not return unto me void. Everybody say Void. But it shall accomplish that which I please. Look at the rest of it. And it shall prosper in the thing where I'm, whereto I sent it. Can you go back one slide there? My word that goes out of, go forth out of my mouth, it will not return to me void. I asked the Lord one day, I said, Lord, you said that your word will not return void. Right? But sometimes it returns to me void. He said, that's because you don't believe my word like I believe my word. Woo. It's like your children. You tell your children, hey, baby, it's time to go to bed. It's time to go to bed. Y'all go upstairs. Y'all go to bed. They go up there, and about two minutes later, you hear like they're fighting or something up there. So you... You yell up there, hey, kids, go to bed. They calm down a little bit, and two minutes later, what's going on? Bunch of noise. Finally, you get tired of it, and you go over to the stairs, and you know how you do it. You make sure they know you're coming up them stairs. By the time you get up top of them stairs, there is no noise to be heard anywhere. You can stand there for five minutes, and if you hear one peep, all you got to do is do one more thump. And what, what just happened there? What just happened? Are your kids rebellious? No, they're your seed. They came from you. They're godly kids. And, and we're, we're, we're speaking in faith now. They're godly kids. They're going to they're gonna be turned out to be angels and all the good stuff. And, and, uh, but they did not believe your word like you believed your word. And when there was a little pressure put on the situation, they started understanding, oh, I got to believe his word like he believes his word or she believes her word. And sometimes God will allow pressure to come toward us. And it's just the fact that God is trying to get you to believe his word like he believes his word. Number two, be willing to obey. The guy who built the largest church in the world, Paul Young E. Cho, So Korea. He was asked by W.A. Criswell, the pastor of the largest Baptist church in the world one time, and what's the success of grow, grow, building the biggest church in the world? He said, it's very simple. I pray and I obey. Criswell said, I need a little bit more than that. He said, there's nothing more. He said, I pray, I hear from God, and I obey. Ladies and gentlemen, 
We have to be willing to obey when God speaks to us. Um, there, there will be a time this year that you're not able to hear from God. There'll be a time in your life you're not able to hear from God. You need to get with your prayer buddies. You need to go see your pastor. You need to see your small group leader, whatever. And you need to say, I'm not hearing from God. Could you pray that I hear from God? I, when I went to college, I wasn't hearing from God. I was just going to get me an ep- economics degree. And all of a sudden, a fellow came up to me and said, God spoke to me and said, you're supposed to be a pastor. And I said, get behind me, Satan. I am not hearing this. I'm not going to be that. My mama told me that when I was growing up. And mama's crazy, too. No preacher for me. And after about six weeks, I started to realize maybe God, but God was using someone else to get me off of my dead center. And God will use the church sometimes to get you off. God will use this program to get you off dead center of where you are in a lot of areas of your life. So write this one down. We must allow God's word to become the architect of our lives. Someone asked me the other day, who do you think you are? I said, how much time you got? <laughs> In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was out form without void. And God said, one day, let's throw some light up there. God said, let's throw some darkness over there. Let's put some stars over there. Let's put some vegetation, put some fishy over there. On the seventh day, he created Mike. <laughs> I'm made in his image. How much more time you got? He said, I'll be the head and not the tail. I'll be out front and like it, like it behind. I am somebody. Everybody hold your thumb up like this. Look at your thumb like this. Everybody say, I'm somebody. I'm somebody. Nobody's got that print you got on that thumb. I'm th- somebody say, I'm somebody. And the second thing is, write this one down. God said, speak to your mountain. Speak to your mountain, not study your mountain. Come on. We preachers are probably at fault for that one. We, we've taught you so well. We've overtaught you sometime. Right, here's four ways to go around your mountain. Or here's two ways to go right in the middle of it. Here's five ways to jump over your mountain. No, Mark 11, 22, 23, 24 says, speak to that mountain. Somebody say, speak to your mountain. Speak to that mountain. And here's another problem. A lot of people want God to come speak to the mountain. It's not his mountain. It's your mountain. you got to speak to your mountain. I've been told three times that I have cancer. Uh, it was years ago. And the first guy told me, you have cancer. And the first thing, words out of my mouth, I said, Doc, I don't do cancer. <laughs> Another woman looking at my skin one day, and she said, oh, we got one right back here. I'm sure it's cancer. I said, uh, uh, hey, hey, Doc, we don't do cancer in my house. She said, well, you got cancer. Three, and I'm cancer-free today. Never had cancer. They just, I mean, they're just practicing on you. There ain't doctors in the house. <laughs> you ought to be locked up. <laughs> Make me go in there and wait in that waiting room. Tell me to be there at 9 o'clock. I get there at 9 o'clock, and I wait in that waiting room for 30 minutes. And then you put me in a second waiting room, and I stay there for an hour. I'm ticked off. <laughs> Last time I was in, I started stealing stuff. You ought to be locked up. (laughs) Number three, be willing to give something of value away. Luke 6.38, you all know that verse. Be willing to give something of value away. Luke 6.38, give it and it, and it. Somebody say it. Somebody say it. Somebody say it. So if I give, it shall be given back. Give and it shall be given to you. So I go first, I give something, and what is your it? What is your it? Young lady, Ash, you got more lights than I can use. <laughs> lady, you see me right there? You have that blue top on right there? You got your hand on that card over there? Is that a baby card? You see me? I'm going to tell you something, sis. God spoke to me about you. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. He's heard your prayer, and he told me that he's going to take care of business for you. Everything's going to work out right. And if I have a word for you, just you just need to live, believe a little bit bigger because God's about to supersize something for you. Somebody give the Lord a hand clap for that. I 
I apologize. I guess. What is your it? What is your it? Sometimes I get a need and I just say, okay, Lord, I'm going to wrap this need. It's my it. I'm going to give a name to it. I put my seed around this need and I'm going to put it in the work of the Lord. And, and we're just believing something's going to happen as we, we plant this. I'm, I'm in need and I talk to my seed. I don't know about y'all, but I talk to seed. When the devil comes up and shows up, he says, I'm going to just mess you up. I'm going to say, you can't mess me up. I got so many seeds in the ground. My life is determined by my harvest. My life is not determined by the bank, not determined by how much I get paid at a job. My life is determined by I got so much stinking seed in the ground everywhere in my life. I got harvest coming up everywhere because every time I get an opportunity, I put some seed in the ground. And let me give you some other word of advice. I live over here in Visalia, and I know a lot about farming. And I tell you what, the best thing about farming is if you find some good soil, it's to your advantage to get a seed in that ground. And I believe this church is some very good soil. And if I'm speaking to anybody today, I would get a seed in the work of God because a harvest is going to come out of that is incredible. <laughs> incredible. <laughs> so. Let me finish up. Let me tell you about your four stages. Four stages. You're in this campaign, and you're going to have to make some decisions what you're going to do. But I feel impressed to tell you this. Um, there's regulated giving. If you come to church, you, 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 if you read the Bible and you come to church, you'll come to a place where you, you feel like you ought to give something to the church. The Bible talks about 10%, and Jesus said 10% in Luke chapter 11. He said we all ought to give 10% to the church. But that's regulated giving. That's one form of giving. Karen and I have been doing that for our entire lives, regulated giving. But the, the second one is reasonable giving. Reasonable giving. Well, when the campaign comes up, uh, uh, we had a building campaign. We built a 3,000-seat auditorium in Visalia, and Visalia first. And when it was coming up, okay, baby, we're paying our tithes. Um, what do you think? We could do, we look at our savings account, oh, we can do this, that's reasonable giving. But the third one is what I want to get you to is revelation giving. And I wish, Pastor, I wish I could put this in a syringe and just back everybody up at the altar. <laughs> because this one changed our lives. It changed me when I was, the Lord spoke to me to give $50 to a missionary. And, and I'm, I don't know if I should say this, but I'm going to say it anyway. And I, I don't want anybody to think that anything other than what it is. We had a two-year campaign going on in our church. And Karen and I got together, and the Lord spoke to us. He said, I want you to give $100,000 to this campaign. Is there anybody else up there? <laughs> that can't be you, is it, Jesus? When you hear crazy things like that, boy, you just have to sleep on that thing, chew on that thing. It wouldn't go away. I want you to give $100,000. Yeah. Now, well, one day, in obedience for a two-year campaign, we wrote down here, we don't make a lot of money, but we felt like we heard it from the Lord. So give $100,000. Like that $50 thing, I didn't know how we were going to do it. So... It in there. Boom. There it goes. We did it. And guess what happened? People start asking me to do things. People start asking me to do this. These people ask me to, somebody hired me to do that. Someone hired me to do that. Hired me to do that. Pastor Jason, in, that, in one year, I had $100,000. And I didn't have the $100,000. But I heard a voice. So when I, when Whatever you're doing in this campaign, unstoppable, I would like for you to move to that phase. I'm not telling you $100,000. God may speak to you $5,000. That may be a big thing for you. It a, was a big thing for me. But whatever revelation God has given you, listen to that voice. Listen to that voice. And you know it's God's voice because it scares you. And you can't do it without faith. And the last one on here is reflective giving. Reflective giving. What my giving does. 
Pastor Jason, I was looking back the other day at our worship center, and uh, we had a, a concert in there, and you couldn't get any more people in the sanctuary. Young people were getting saved left and right. The bigger facility we got, the more people we got saved. It gave us more opportunity. We, we brought King and Country in the other day, and I don't know if you've ever seen those crazy guys, but they took the lid off that place, and people came from everywhere. When you, get, when you go bigger, more people are going to come towards you. And now I look back, and I'm no longer the pastor. We stepped down and transitioned out and got a great pastor now. And, and but I drive by, and I just think, reflectively, we did that. We and a group of people got together and told the devil, enough is enough. We hate the fact that you got a bigger youth group than we do. So we're going to do something about it. So, if you're here today, is there anybody here that you lost your job, you're out of a job, that just could you raise your hand, uh, you're here, you lost your job, or you're out of a job? Pastor, I can't see, can you see? Can you, can you come here? Do you mind coming here? Just crawl over these seats. I just know come to, I'll go that way. <clears throat> I bet you didn't wake up this morning thinking this was going to happen. Nope. <laughs> I'm Mike. Sherry. Um, how are you, Sherry? Good. Um, I'm going to give you some money. Just, the Lord spoke to me and just said, I need to give some money away. So, uh, uh, here's 50 bucks. It's yours. So, oh, I get a hug? Wow, I love this shirt. I had $30 in my purse. I got to go buy lunch. I was going to go give something to buy your nudge book. <laughs> <'Cause I'm> like, <laughs> you're gone. <laughs> so, what are you going to do with that? I don't know yet. I'm going to talk to my, my, my friends in Todd. <laughs> yeah? I don't know. Well, I didn't after this sermon, what do you think you ought to do? You ought to pray? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> See what God wants you to do? Well, I can tell you what God wants you to do. Right off the bat, he wants you to give 10% of it away. So I'll take five back. <laughs> and because you did that, here's 50 more. Now what are you going to do with that? Ten percent. So here's a hundred. Enjoy your day. God bless you. And go get a free God nuts book. Tell them it's free on me. Free on me. That's the way God works. You obey the ten percent. He says, "Here's more." And then she said, "Well, I'll give more." And she gets. I mean, folks, I'm not making this stuff up. Hey, thank you for watching the Discovery Church YouTube channel. Don't stop here. Join the Discovery Online family every Sunday. Subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a single video or live stream event and share it with a friend. You can also support the ministry by clicking the Give button to help us continue to reach people around the world for Jesus Christ. Thank you again for watching. Go love God, love each other, and change the world.